Last time we looked over all of the chapter 2 journal stuff and I didn't really like how that went because I was trying to save my voice by not reading everything out loud since there was so much more of it. And uh, chapter 1 just ruined my voice. So from this point forward what I'm going to do is at the end of each episode I'm going to read any new journal entries. Um, and uh, that way... Uh, I won't be interrupting gameplay to read new journal entries, I will be reading everything out loud, and I'll be saving my voice. So, anyway, let's, uh... Oh yeah. Okay. One other thing. Okay, so from the faintest noise, capture the deepest significance. Um, echoes of the past can be found where karma lingers. This makes me wonder if now I can go through that, uh, sand fall. Maybe? Um, I certainly... Actually, also, I have... These remaining... Uh, Yagwai kings and Yagwai chiefs that I still need to do, so maybe... Maybe they're all in the past, kind of like the, uh, Fuban. Maybe. Anyway, um, right, relics, so, um, and then we have all ears, slightly extends invincibility, duration of the first move of all varied combos, doing things in, like, mixing up the light and heavy is not something I've really done, I've just done light combos, uh, attacks, so... I'll have to try and figure that out, I suppose. And then Sound of Bell makes it so that if we execute a parry, then we don't use up our mana to do it. Uh, might be useful. I mean, if I can get it consistently, it would be certainly useful. And then, uh, temporarily increases attack after a perfect dodge. Yeah, let me close that. Okay, let's just go next chapter. White snow ice cold. I say parry, but a deflection. That's what I mean. Read that at the end of this episode. I 
and I know you're alive. I'm not gonna attack. Boom. I didn't expect... I didn't expect to be hit by that. It says pry open, but really, we're just opening it. there for a second. Aged staff. Refined iron sand. Oh, no, no, I wasn't trying to do that. So that's my parry. Or deflect.
Okay, yeah, this is a level, this is a boundary. That, that thing from chapter two is definitely more than just a boundary. Because it was like the whole ripple effect. That was like a barrier. Okay, so you swing as you die, that's good. Wasn't expecting that. Also, I assume some of these just... Let's just... <laughs> My cock chief. Thank <laughs> you. 
scripted survival, always fun. At least it wasn't super hard. That particular fight. Find iron sand. I needed that for an upgrade or crafting. Oh, cold iron leaves. That was another thing I needed. so pure, still, and sure. Look at you, through the heavy snow you roam. Desiring that thing, no doubt. I read your fortune before you came. Care to hear? Act not and be still, thy gifts are thy ill. If you seek your own end, I shall not stop you. <laughs> I. The Keeper of the New West, welcome the Destined One! Now fly!
on the lake? Therein lies the thing you seek. The lord of this land is away. Seize it now, and leave. Okay. Well, there was a bunch of stuff back there that I had not yet explored. So... Let's say, uh, yeah, the new west. Let's go back to the frost cloud path. Also, very early on we were transformed into a cicada. I have yet to figure out how one does that intentionally. even possible. Come on. Oh, 
that is... Shoot, that's a lot. No, I didn't mean to go down here. Oh, are you actually for real? How did... Okay, I can't jump over that rock for some reason. stairs. There's literally stairs. Pick it up. Mountain patroller. Okay. That, I think, clears that direction.
Guarding realistically. 360 will is not that big of a prize. Well, I mean, yeah, not anymore anyway. Huh. So this is the front gate. So that's where we got basically forced into flying off. Can't go that way, huh? Okay. Can't go this way either. Well, it looks like stuff up there, but... I guess maybe not. Okay. 
I mean, there could still be something. Okay, so now I have everything I need to make the weapon except for Will. Um, not sell that. Well, I'm getting close-ish. Um... I should try the varied combos. Oh, right, I keep forgetting about that. Well, I don't know what the combos exact exactly are. Descended to the mortal realm with the barefoot immortal. This can be used to make medicines. by a mile.
Another mind core. Speaking of which, I. Oh my gosh. Also, I cannot dodge. definitely feel like going out there is uh, a boss fight. Third combos. Let's do this one. Increases defense and take it. Okay. Um, yeah, before we go out there. sell that. I feel like that's supposed to be used for something else. Because the reason I think that is because there's the possibility of buying one of those from the man in stone. Um, I do feel like, well, I haven't really experienced what, it, what it's like to be frozen in this game, so I don't know what to expect. I don't know if it's going to be an extra damage thing, but that seems to be the realm of the uh, shock effect. So I'm kind of assuming that it's going to slow you down if you get frozen, which would be really bad. I've been, I've been mulling over what I want to do with the uh, celestial medicine and uh, I could get more health and maybe that's the best thing but the idea of getting additional uh, elemental resistances is also extremely enticing and I, I don't know let's uh let's read our journal entries and end this episode. 
So we got a few lesser supporter monks. In the past, the craftsmen building the Grand Hall in the New West frequently encountered strange occurrences, leading many to quit. Curious, one craftsman sought out the abbot, reputed to be a high monk, for answers. The abbot, without hesitation, led him to the Great Pagoda, where he revealed the Lantern Warden. The craftsmen were terrified, having heard tales of Yaogwais in their youth, but never having seen one. At that moment, a wondrous sound echoed through the Great Pagoda and the Lantern Warden emitted a blinding light, causing the craftsmen to lose their sight. They cried out in despair. The abbot smiled and said, To see the truth, one must be willing to sacrifice even sight. You might well stay here in this temple and practice the path to ultimate bliss with me. Perhaps you will have the chance to transcend and reach the Buddha's realm. Realizing they were now blind and unable to find work, the craftsmen decided to abandon their secular life and join the temple. They asked the abbot how they should practice, and he replied, Whatever you are skilled at, practice that. The craftsmen, known for their great strength, decided to pursue enlightenment through martial arts. Despite their blindness, they trained under the temple's overseeing monks. They tied large stones to iron chains and attached them to their wrists, lifting them daily. This also conveniently prepared the stones needed for the temple's construction. The abbot was pleased and appointed them as supporter monks, saving a considerable amount in labor costs. Oh, that yeah, supporter. That was the, like the very first enemy we fought. Okay, Cyan Bat. In the past, there was a butcher named uh, Wang in Changwang Village. Orphaned at a young age, his mother couldn't support him, so she sent him to apprentice with a butcher at the foot of the mountain where he honed his skills. One day, a wealthy family in town was celebrating a birthday and invited Wong to slaughter pigs and sheep. Pleased with his work, the host rewarded him with a leg of pork. Wong decided to bring the pork leg back to his mother and set off for the village that night. Halfway there, he saw a man by the roadside holding a hunting spear and wearing an old cloth shirt. The man called out, Brother, I'm a hunter from the village, trapping rabbits down the slope. I'm afraid of ghosts at night. May I walk with you? Wong nodded in agreement, and they continued on their way. After a while, the hunters stared, uh, started a conversation. Brother, have you heard? There have been reports of Yaogwais in this mountain path recently. Wong laughed. What's there to fear about Yaogwais? I have a butcher's knife at my waist and a pork leg on my shoulder. If I encounter a Yaogwai, I'll swing the pork leg at it and chop it with my knife. The hunter forced a smile. After walking a bit further, the hunter said, Brother, you must be very skilled if you're not afraid of Yaogwais. Wong laughed again. I've been slaughtering animals since I was a child. One strike can hit the vital spot, and one chop can break bones and tendons. The hunter, annoyed, said, How can you compare Yaogwais to animals? Wong replied seriously, There are no Yaogwais in this world. Those who uphold justice are heroes. Those who bully the innocent are simply foul beasts. The hunter, unsure how to respond, walked on in silence. As the village came into view, the hunter hesitated and said, Since you're not afraid... Why not turn around and look at me? Wong had already suspected the hunter was a Yaogwai. He swung the pork leg, knocking the hunter to the ground, and raised his knife to strike. The Yaogwai, losing its composure, quickly spread its wings and flew into the air, spitting. Today I met a tough one. Bad luck, bad luck. With that, it fled immediately. Ah, they say the soft persimmons are easier to squeeze, hence it's better to be strong, stand firm, and even Yagwais will fear you a bit. Frozen Corpse The temple rules state, new monks entering the temple may receive a new Kasaya. One day, Master Nan Void joyfully welcomed a new disciple and personally led him to the storeroom to fetch a Kasaya. The young disciple found that the Kasaya was made of a single layer of cloth, hardly adequate for the snowy mountains. 
He asked, Master, this thin kasai seems suitable for summer. Could I exchange it for a woolen one? Nanavoy shook his head, shook his own kasai, and said, The one I wear is the same as the one in your hands, only more ornate. With the Buddha's wisdom in your heart, you shall fear the cold no more. The young disciple, still doubtful, asked, Master, I saw many seniors frozen to death by the roadside. Nanavoy kindly replied, their understanding was shallow and minds unsteady, yet you are different. I can see that you have the potential to comprehend the Buddha's wisdom. The young disciple, feeling proud, happily followed his master back with the Kasaya. Not long after, another frozen corpse appeared outside the temple of the gate. As Nanvoy led his new disciple past it, the young disciple asked, Master, did, all, did these seniors all freeze to death? Nunvoid continued walking slowly and said, Fear not, my disciple. They lacked piety and wisdom, but you are different. Well, that's sad. So he just keeps leading one after another there and telling them the same thing, and then they just keep freezing. Yashka Patroller. Or, sorry, Yakshas. Yaksha Patroller. The Yakshas who migrated from the west had a great fondness for meat. Fortunately, New Thunderclub Temple did not uphold a strict rule against eating meat, which delighted the Yakshas who sought refuge there. All the Yakshas in the mountains aspired to become patrollers, not only because of the uniquely designed large sword that looked particularly imposing, it could fly back to its owner with great precision, but also because patrollers guarded the other the outer mountains and always had access to fresh meat. One day, the Yakshas gathered together, drinking blood, eating meat, and reveling in their merriment. Their raucous behavior soon became known throughout the temple. The overseeing monks, who adhered to <coughs> sorry, who adhered to ascetic practices and only ate food, not flesh, were displayed. Oh, food not of flesh, were displeased. They carried a large pot to the Yakshas. When the Yakshas peered into the pot, they saw only radishes and greens. Their appetite waned. When Yaksha did write to them, Do you think eating this will help you gain a deeper understanding of Dharma? How shallow. Another added, Our master said that to achieve ultimate bliss, one should not restrain one's desires. Hearing this, the supervising monk replied, My desire is to promote virtue. If I cannot persuade you, I too shall be unable to achieve ultimate bliss. Thus both sides argued heatedly without reaching a conclusion. Alas, eating what one likes and saying what one wants are not inherently wrong. However, one's happiness should not disturb others, and one should never derive pleasure from judging those perceived to have transgressed. In this case, both sides were at fault. Alright, well, that's gonna do it for this episode. When we come back next time, we will head over to yonder building so anyway thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time